It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obuchi, and thanks a lot for joining us. We're still counting down to the 29th of May when um, uh, President-elect and President uh, Muhammadu Buhari will be sworn in for a second term in office. Um, a new administration, so to speak, will be taking uh, charge of the nation, and um, there's a lot of expectations, a lot of hope. Um, I don't know that a lot of people are very optimistic, but at the same time, we can only believe that the next four years will be better. So, fingers crossed, we did see images of Mr. President running uh, <laughs> in far away Saudi Arabia where he went to perform the Hajj. So, he looks like he's fit and ready to, to take on the challenges of Nigeria in the next four years. Looking forward to all of that. But the last week has been quite uh, uh, daunting, I want to use that word, uh, especially for women across the world. We've been hearing about, you know, a lot of stories about abortion laws. Uh, being quite dramatic in the United States. But here in Nigeria, Abuja and, um, has been in the news um, for all the wrong reasons with regards to you know, the rights of women and uh, all of that. We did also have a, a Nollywood actor who got involved in the mix and didn't particularly say some of the, some of the, some of the nicest things uh, about rape and about women and just things around that. And we're going to be starting off our conversation with that. Hoping to get some answers. And I have here with me Dorothy Njemanza, who's an actor and a rape activist, and Akubwez Okocha, who's a lawyer. Thanks for being here today. Thank Thanks for having us. Anti rape activist. <laughs> <Auntie Rape. laughs> <Auntie Rape. laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so the Abuja story has been quite um, in the news, but a lot of people don't still seem to understand what happened. Because, especially, like I said earlier, when um, the actor, I think, um, Okon Lagos, I'm not sure what his real name is now, he. Well, yeah. So. Sure. Bishop, yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people were not now sure exactly what the situation was, was with the case in Abuja. Were they prostitutes? Were they women working on their own? Were they raped? What exactly, maybe in a quick one minute, two minutes, give us an idea or a better picture of what it was that happened in Abuja. So, well, that's been happening in Abuja, yes, actually. Yeah. It, there, were, there were some occurrences recently that brought the whole thing to limelight again, but it didn't start now. Um, it's happened to me personally three times in Abuja, and the three times I was sexually molested, uh, you know, and eventually I headed to the ECOWAS court, you know, I took Nigeria to the ECOWAS court along with three other people, and we got a judgment in favor of uh, us. We, in fact, it was a landmark judgment. It was an embarrassment. 2017, October 2017, um, the ECOWAS court pronounced, made a pronouncement against Nigeria, and Nigeria happens to be the first country pronounced uh, by a court guilt, to be guilty of contravening the provisions of the Maputo Protocol. And that's a big disgrace to Nigeria. Um, damages were awarded to us. We, what, what has been happening is, uh, the damages have not been paid, by the way. Um, what has been happening is that women in Abuja, there's this moral policing that is done. And the moral policing that people are doing violates our human rights, as are guaranteed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And so we've been shouting about it, and there are excuses that um, they are fighting prostitution. And I, my, my question is, okay, majority of the people who were abducted from the streets of Abuja did not make it before the mobile courts. So what is the means of, you know, deciphering who is prostitute and who is not prostitute? What is the definition of prostitute? Which law are you you know, using to clamp down on prostitution. And how can there be such, such a thing as prostitution? I would like to believe that it's some kind of transactional sex, for instance. Um, if, if that is the situation, like the ECOWAS court, you know, pronounced, the, all parties to the said transaction should be brought before the law, and not only women. But we found situations where taxpaying businesses were invaded, and all women that were on the premises were brought out and labeled strippers or prostitutes, and, you know, subjected to different degrees of uh, dehumanizing treatment. There was a lot of physical violations, including alleged um, uh, rapes and other kinds of sexual molestations. Now, it's unfortunate the police is taking the fall for it all because there's a task force. But the police was part of the abduction process. What happens is not an arrest. It's an abduction because the law stipulates what, you know, an arrest should be. The, the police was part of the abduction process. There were violations in the buses going to, you know, to the holding camps. Then the, the people who were abducted off the streets were kept in police custody you know, in their, as holding facilities. And there were more violations there. There were also violations on the way to court because these people were denied access to legal representation. And so there are so many fundamental errors 
in what transpired. Yeah. I, I want, sorry, I'm, I'm, we're going to come back to you. I want to talk about you know, the legality of all of this now. Um, you're a lawyer. Um, we hear about this task force in Abuja a lot. And like she said, it's not something that started today. It's been an ongoing sort of situation. Um, what laws? Because if you've gone to the court and she says she's won a case and there's still no enforcement, the, we don't hear that the minister is necessarily stopping it. They obviously might be backed by some sort of parastatal body in Abuja. What was the legality of this and why does it keep happening? The truth is that it's legal because security raids are essential to, you know, avoid security threats. And the mandates of these bodies and security agencies obviously gives them, you know, the legal backing to go on these raids. Now, the issue is how they are actually implementing these raids. As already said, the Abuja um, Environmental Protection Board and the Social Development Secretariat were the groups that led the raids to the clubs. Abuja Environmental Protection Board, when you think about that, what's really the mandate of that body? It's cleaning up, sanitation, noise pollution, things like that. It's not to arrest innocent women, women exactly. And, you know, there was a lot of, you know, I don't know if I'll call it magu magu, but um, some of the women ended up being released without any kind of criminal charge or anything. Like people just paid money and, you know, bail is meant to be free, but people paid money and then they left. So they went out the next day and tried to make up the numbers that had been lost because they didn't get the final say from the head of the social development secretariat. And then they, that's when they now started picking up innocent girls that were just on the road or if you're wearing a scanty dress or why are you standing at an indomie joint by 11 o'clock? Like girls can't get hungry and go outside to buy something to eat. So to go back to your question, it is legal because they have a mandate to go out and perform these raids, but then they are not actually using the raids for the function that that law has envisioned for it. It's not to pick up innocent girls. There's not an environmental issue is with girls. Is there any law clubbing. against women sort of being out in Abuja? <laughs> no, there, there's being nothing at hotels. like that. Is there any laws against clubs? No, there's nothing like that. And if you even look at the charges that were brought against these women, they were brought under the AAPB Act, Section 351D, which says um, trading and soliciting for, of goods and articles. So they twisted that to say that the girls were trading their bodies as articles to engage in and solicit for sex and things like that. So they, they tried to make a law that's about trading and hawking, maybe, into one about selling your body. There's actually no law against prostitution, to, not to talk less of law against clubbing or curfews for women. Yeah. So it's like, it's really, as Dorothy, th Dorothy said, you know, a moral thing. It's yeah. moral policing. There's no... You, you said you, you've, you've, you've been through this sort of situation back, back in, a few years ago. What, how does it, what happens? You know, what did they tell you your crime was? And how do people, why does it keep happening? And what, I, I'm just trying to understand, what did they tell you you did wrong? So, um, as a woman, um, the first time was 2012, September 29th, okay. 2012. I was going to MC an event, you know, in the evening. About what time was this? Say 7.38. I was heading to the event venue because I was empty for an event. And then at the end of my street, I parked behind a white bus. There was a lady in my car. I had her on my radio program earlier that afternoon. And so she was thankful that I brought on the radio program, so she offered to do my makeup for the show. That's how, come, that's how come a human being was with me. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been a witness. And so I just wanted to talk to my brother at the end of my street. I parked behind a white bus. For me to pass the white bus, men came out. And they, they, you see, what offended me was that I was grabbed from my breast. That was what offended me. And then I was shoved to the bus. They put me inside the bus. I fought my way out on getting out because I was troublesome. The soldiers with them beat me. You know the entrance to a bus is rectangular. Uh, 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 yeah, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, it's, it's rectangular. Long, yeah. And so I put my hands and my leg, and they kept on hitting me on my knees and my ankles to bend it, to push me in. The girls in the bus were crying. I didn't know what my crime was. I didn't understand what was happening. I was offended about the way they were groping at me and everything to make me, to, to subdue me, to push me in. And my brother was hearing this thing. He didn't know I was the victim. That's how everybody who is keeping quiet and watching this thing happening to is going to come close to your family. That's exactly how it happens at the end of my street. And well, people identified me as an actress that they know. People identified me as a presenter of radio programs. People identified me as a stunt driver within the neighborhood. And so they said, no, say na shower where we know Sabi very well for this area. But the, the mob that gathers dared the people to see how they would take me away. And that was my only saving grace. That was the first time.
Now, the second time was the first week of December, a day before a protest march I led against these same abductions. I was, get, uh, I was getting um, signatures from uh, hospitality industry practitioners. The driver had gone, the driver was trapped in fuel queues, and so it took us into the night. Now, the second person with me was eating fish somewhere. So I'm like, okay, while you're eating your fish, let me get some more signatures from places that are open. And that was what I went to do. I was coming out of a place, next thing, catch them, catch them, catch them, just to get into the car. And then there were policemen, there were different people groping at me. Now, there's these people pulling me, and then the um, bouncers and the rest of the place then on, on Sumer Street were pulling me. This is one human being. Different people were pulling me here and there. And in the process, your things get lost, your things get missing. I, I showed my ID cards. They said anybody can forge an ID card. So I keep asking, what's the war against women? Now, while we were in the Echo was called, because it's a cabal system, it's a racket. Everywhere we wrote letters to, we found out that our files were getting lost in government offices. The ECOWAS court happened to be a court of first instance. And so I said, look, having even exhausted my local remedies as far as I was concerned, I proceeded to the ECOWAS court. Now, while we were in the ECOWAS court in 2014, there was pandemonium somewhere, and I was filming what happened. And in the process, somebody, the person um, was wearing a prison's uniform. He put his hand into my trousers and pulled out my hair in the process of doing that. Now, why would a man need to do such a thing? These violations... You know, I, okay, if, you're, if, if, if there's such a war against women, why do you not deploy women? Why do you deploy men? The Niger counsel to Nigeria in court said that um, an arresting officer during arrest has the right to hold anybody on any part of the body he so deems fit. And these are issues that have come up. In the process of touching people here and there, you're violating the rights yeah. of people. Let, let me just come to you now, because I, I, I need to know, why, why is this so hard... Um, or why doesn't there seem to be a will from government to, to end this? Um, because, like, she's gone to court, people have spoken out against it. It was all over social media the, the past week. As it has been in years past, why does this particular issue seem not to be a, a bother, you think, for government? I think we're all kind of wondering the same thing because for the past two weeks now, so many human rights organizations have been coming out to demand, you know, some form of restitution for these women and for these raids to stop. There have been countless meetings at the National Human Rights Commission. We go, the last one we had, which was on Friday, the different heads of the different agencies that were involved came, and they're not all speaking with the same voice. Like, some, the AAPB director is talking about how the um, building was a violation of the building permit, but they're only talking about one club. They're only talking about the, the noise pollution. They're not actually talking about the raids on women, which we know happen every more week. More than just that like, one. More than well. just that one. And, but they're focused on the building that has been demolished. And, you know, they're not really thinking of the things that are happening to these women on a weekly basis. These ones only came to light because they invited TV cameras to come along and they, they even dragged out the women naked. So that's when people could now realize that, oh, wow, so this thing is still going on. And nobody from our federal government, has, our president, our VP, nobody has really actually come out to say any kind of statement on it. We're just getting representatives of the IG, representatives from the different agencies. Yeah. But I'm, I'm wondering, are they really taking it seriously? Are they yeah. seeing the violations that are happening to our fundamental rights. Yeah. Like, there's, there's, there were allegations of rape. I have to use that word, allegation, yes. very strongly because we can't necessarily prove anything. But I don't know if you've been in contact with a lot of these women and you have also been through that. Yes. You know, I don't know what you can speak on with regards to that particular issue. So um, there are different allegations, not only of rape. The rage is not with the rapes. The rage is with the raid. In the first instance, the raid should not happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because until there is a curfew in Abuja when you're taking people off the streets, then there should be no raids. Yeah. If there are raids, do not take women alone off the streets. Take men and women. Otherwise, it's a war against women. Yeah. That's our, our, and so people have said, oh, when, when they were taking me, I was groped inappropriately. I was done. And, and I believe it strongly because it has happened to me three times, not once. And on the different times, you know, it was the same thing. Um, I've, been, I've, I've spoken with, and the ladies did not talk about the rapes, even at that point alone. There was somebody who was February 15th. And there's, you know, so many so of this. So it has location. been yeah. happening on let's, and on. Let's, let's quickly find out, because I knew the Inspector General of Police did speak on this. So let's find out what he had to say. 
the reading of the, the women, uh, it was a task force from FCT that came out to do their job and they requested police to support them, which the police did, and the uh, women were arrested and then charged and they were convicted, which means they committed uh, offense within the FCT territory. But the actions of the police officer that they were alleged to have uh, raped and molested the women, that will set up a panel to investigate. And anybody caught and uh, proven to have done that will face the law. Well, um, I think I get two things from there. First of all, he's saying this was not a police raid. They probably just supported the task force. But on the second part of it, I think what he said, maybe just give some hope that, okay, they're going to they're doing some sort of investigation. We're trying to look for a way forward now. How do we move on from this? Are there ways? What, do, what, what should Nigerians be doing? He talked about a police okay. raid. It wasn't <laughs> just, it was so that if your sister, or your wife, your mother, your grandmother, your daughter gets abducted off the streets of Abuja, Honestly, you don't know where to look for her. Police raids independently, the Environmental Task Force raids. And then the different people who make up the Environmental Task Force, NDLEA, Civil Defense, Road Safety, all of them, they raid their own independently. So it depends on who is broke at the particular point in time. So you don't know where to look for your family member. It took us several days before we found these ladies. We saw the news on social media. We found them only on Monday. So, yeah. <laughs> and then... Uh, is it constitutional that there must have been a law that they were charged under and everything? I'm still saying it. APB Act is what... Do you know, to, have we gotten a first information report? No, We've not gotten a charge sheet. There's no charge sheet that exists. For anybody. People have been convicted without a charge sheet. Sorry. People, yeah. shorties, <laughs> mm -hmm. people were forced to sign uh, documents to shorty people without crimes filled in. So if they waited for the crimes to be filled in. It meant that the ladies would have been in prison custody for the past two weeks plus. And the girls said they were threatened that if they do not plead guilty, they will be remanded in prison custody. Nobody is listening to these ingredients yeah. to yeah. investigate. Yeah. So moving on to the yeah. way forward, the first thing is that the raids need to stop really and truly because, as I said, even though the mandate is there, they are not being exercised according to the mandate. Yeah. So that would be my second piece of advice. Like all these agencies, they really need to go back and retrain their staff or their officials and re, uh, you know, institutionalize what the actual mandate of that agency or that office is for. The Abuja Environmental Protection Board should not be out at all sorts of hours in the night raiding women. Like, How does that fit within what the law actually envisioned this organization to be? So I think that would be my second thing. And then Nigerians need to you know, speak up and stop tri trivializing the issue. Even if these women are exactly about making There's nothing comical about it. Even if these women are prostitutes, like they have been violated at every point of the way. And as she said, there are so many innocent women as well who just plead, pled guilty because they had been warned that if you don't plead guilty, it's going to be three months in prison, imprisonment for you. There was one woman there, her brother was literally crying because he was with her in the club. And he was like, how are you pleading guilty to this when I took you to the club? I know you're not a prostitute. So it's like we can't be doing comedy skits about it. And even down to the court system as well, we need reform as well. Because how are you going to convict over 28 girls, and there is no lawyer there to defend them. You know, it was after, as she said, it took us so long to find them and to find out how can you even arrest women and keep them incommunicado. Like, we need to actually start holding our government accountable and showing them that, look, we understand what our rights are now, and we need you to enforce those rights, and you need to hold people who violate those rights accountable. accountable. Well, I... I don't know that even an hour would we, we'll do enough justice to this, mm -hmm. but I mean, the conversation hopefully continues. Thanks a lot for being here today. It's a very heartbreaking story, and like you said, Nigerians just need to not keep quiet anymore because, should, I mean, that's the only way that we can put something. Thanks yeah. a lot for sharing your story with us. Mm -hmm.